Hello, this is Cuckoo Melodies. Melodies, melodies. What is a good melody? Some people ask me over and over again, how do you create good melodies? Please uh, tell me about the process. And I've tried, I've tried uh, three, this is the third time I'm trying to make a video about how to create melodies and how to improve. And I find it difficult to talk about not because it involves difficult um, means, it's just to put notes after each other, after all, <laughs> in the right rhythm. Uh, but because it's, it's a bit fuzzy, like a melody has its own life. You send it off on a little journey, climbing on a little mountain, and you let it climb to a certain point, and that creates a sort of imbalance uh, and you need to straighten up that balance by letting it climb to another point that makes sense in the whole melody now this is super fuzzy so fuzzy terms that uh, and that's the only way i know how to talk about melodies so it needs to be fuzzy and it needs to be emotionally driven there's like a melodic intuition baked in everything that i do and I think in in my early teens, in my teens, when I was a teenager, I played a lot of video games with super catchy melodies. And I think that time in, in life is a time where you sort of define a tonal universe. So all, all of my melodies, they stem from that. I can evolve and learn new ways of making melodies, but I think that seed that was planted in my teenage years uh, is very, very important for me when it comes to my uh, melodic intuition. That being said, let me try to create a few melodies and let's talk through the process of how I make melodies and why I make certain uh, choices along the way. And uh, yeah, perhaps you'll find it inspiring and useful. Uh, by no means, I, I'm not an expert, and I usually refrain to speak about music theory on my channel. I want to keep it approachable for everyone, and uh, even though I know some musical theory, I think I'll try as best as I can to to talk about this in a way that is easy to understand. Um, okay. So bear with me while I go on this emotional little journey uh, about fuzzy intuition. <laughs> Let's try it. Okay, this is a keyboard. I've been playing the keyboard for a long time in my life. Uh, although I'm not classically trained, it's something that I feel very comfortable with. <laughs> And because I feel comfortable with it, it's a, a good platform for me to create melodies. Uh, so I suggest if you are making melodies, um, use the the tool that you know the best. Like if you're singing, whistling, um, playing the guitar, use, use the one that you feel comfortable. I'm going to use this and it's a good way to also show stuff. So I, I can show you the stuff on the screen, which is very useful in this case. Okay, so let's make a little melody. A melody is notes, tone, pitches, rhythm, and balance. Okay. Okay, that's a little improvised little uh, thing, and let's l look at it now. First of all, let's see this. There is a little rising mountain there, and now it's rising again, and now it's going down. And this is one half a phrase, we could say, or, or like the first phrase. And then we're sort of repeating the structure, a little mountain, even higher than the first one, 
and then the second mountain is even higher than the second one and then ending with like a closure this is um the structure can be looked at like this um, but it's hard to tell if the notes are nice or if it sounds good but you can tell that the structure there is something symmetrical about the structure okay let's listen to it And already, this is like the first phrase. I can hear, I'm not landing. This is like, it's in D minor. I can hear that, right? And I'm starting out with a D, but the phrase ends with an A. So it, it doesn't land back on, on, the, on the beginning, which suggests that uh, there is something coming after this. And also, halfway. After that first little phrase, I could hear myself playing this, I don't know, medieval uh, kind of uh, scale. And because... This is the scale that I suddenly just played in, yeah, it kind of suggests that, okay, this is the scale, now I have to continue playing that scale. And of course, I could have decided before I started playing what, to, what scale to play, but I didn't. It just turned out this. The moment I pressed that note, I knew that, okay, I, that is like a rule. I, I, if I'm breaking that rule in this little melody, I uh, better have a, a good plan of why. Okay. Starting us slow. Yeah, that's a a nice little it's balance i think the intention of it's okay it's not fantastic but it's okay i felt the urge to make a variation there because it started out really simple I felt like, ah, that was kind of simple. Let's, I felt the urge for playing faster notes and make variation. So, therefore. I don't like what I did there. I don't like this, this tone. Let's change it. Yeah, reverse them. Let's see. Because the next one coming there it just it didn't make sense there was no harmony there for me it, the intention the melodic intention uh, wasn't clear of why should i go this and then um it, it didn't make sense but now i changed it to Let's listen to it. I forgot. It became much more natural. Um, a natural transition from, from this tone to the next phrase.
Okay, let's listen to that end again. Let's see if we can fix it. I, I didn't like the ending there particularly. Let's see. It was too simple, too uh, repetitive. I'll go here. Let's see. Just shifting it down a bit. I can see the shape of the mountain uh, becomes a slope that is kind of. Uh, finding its way home, in a way. Let's see. Yeah, that that was much more a logical way to go, I think. Okay, so, yeah, that's a little melody. Um... If I were to improve it even more, I think I'd do an even more fun variation over here. Let's see. That's just a bit standard and boring. How about introduce now this is a place where I think that's too standard, that's too obvious or too within the scale. I would like it to perhaps climb outside of the scale for just a little um moment. How about so now i'm I'm just gonna try some notes. How about, yeah. Dun. Dun, dun, dun. How about, I'm just going to try stuff here. It's not too bad, not too bad. Not the best in the world, but not too bad. Okay, let's listen to the whole thing. So this is a little exercise in laying out a little melody, a little sketch, and then refining it, finding out what's wrong with it, and refining it again, and trying out ways of improving your melody. I don't like the the beginning. works much better with this scale that we ended up in, this kind of medieval. Okay. I don't like that. Have to. It doesn't work. It doesn't harmonize with what what was going on here. Uh, so in the whole, I kind of forgot the beginning when I made that change, and and therefore I made a a choice here that didn't harmonize with the whole picture. 
So you need to keep that in mind. Let's see. Dum, dum. Listen to this. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know if this is going to make sense. Let's listen to it. See. Maybe let's listen together with the beginning. Perhaps a bit of a leap there. It's a balance. It's always about balance and yeah, okay. As you can hear, a bass uh, really helps when creating melodies. Now, creating a melody without any sort of, of harmonies, chords or bass uh, is actually kind of tricky uh, because you're only left with the melody. But a strong melody can often live um, on its own without any help from a bass or melodies, uh, chords. And, and in a way, I think, um, especially in chip music, which is often based on hard restrictions, you can only use like three, uh, three voices at the same time and stuff. Um, so sometimes if you want a chord, it is stealing all of the resources. And then to get back on the melody and the bass, Uh, you need to be really smart on how you create your song. And that leads, and this is what I've been listening to a lot in my uh, teenage years. I was listening to game music from Sega Mega Drive and Nintendo and stuff. And the whole melody, and I, I think this is equal to a lot of pop music, the whole melody, a, a whole song, could sort of be seen as a monophonic uh, thing where you can basically sing the whole thing the, uh, bass drums uh, melodies chords nothing is really happening at the same time but it's laid out after each other in the arrangement and a pop arrangement uh, with gaming sounds is often laid out in a way that the whole arrangement becomes the melody the red line the red thread that uh, 
makes the whole song. So the piano piece there, what I just did was kind of navigate through the process of making a melody and try to refine it and make it better. Uh, it didn't end up like a super memorable piece, I'd say. But I think it's still relevant the way it's kind of coming together and the way the structure is helping the whole song to uh, yeah to hold together but this is just one phrase this is not a whole song so how would you make a melody for a whole song now that is something bigger and then you need a, a you know a different concept in your head i think let's create another melody okay the way i make melodies i often play like piano or I play with both of my hands, bass and melodies. Okay, let's create a, another key. I'm jamming out like a game-inspired so song, I guess. Um, <clears throat> let's turn on the metronome. Turn up the tempo. How about, yeah, 128. Let's, you know, I'm going to improvise a song right here and, and see, again, just throw it all out and see where it leads me and then talk through the process of why I did stuff that I did and then try to refine it and make it uh, better. But now I'm going to try to think a, a whole song uh, rather than just a phrase. So just zip on the T. <clears throat> Okay, improvising with metronome. Okay, one, two, three. Now, I made a lot of errors, uh, and uh, but the idea, I think, was kind of clear, and I felt like I could sort of keep it together into one kind of chip tune uh, inspired song. And when we're looking at everything at the same time, um, let's increase the viewing area. Um, I'm not sure we could see, like, yeah, what we can see from this is the different sections. We can see it's 
starting over here, repetitive, similar, we created like the rules of this song. And here we can see longer tones, like a bridge, I guess, leading, or a B, B part is leading into something new. And here I'm transposing up. I'm taking a leap, feeling like, yeah, I'm going to have to make something different and go up. So I'm transposing the whole thing kind of up there. And then I'm sort of thinking I should go back to, to the beginning to kind of... Uh, and close the <laughs> to close off seal the de the deal and uh yeah ending up here and kind of ending with a little crescendo or something so that's a little song let's listen to it and i try to stay uh relatively uh in uh in time but i am not known to have the best timing in the world so but I did all right. Let's listen to it again and correct stuff. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, first of all, I'm going to quantize that note so that it's in the beginning. And that thing going up there is a way to kind of uh, make a little hook or something to or a little um, variation in tempo because I, I was feeling I was playing awfully straight here and there's no real surprises or anything and that is a way to kind of uh, make like a funny little uh, rhythmical uh, I'm not even sure what it's called but a little something there to say hey let's do it again and also i could hear i missed this sort of bass there that i would like to put in there this something i don't know about this I'm gonna I could probably quantize the whole thing because I didn't do any uh, challenging um, like triplets or fives or anything but I'm, I'm not gonna quantize I'm gonna quantize here and there just after I don't know it just changed A mistake there and this is where I felt like it's time to break out of the the little loop now uh, didn't work out. let's see dum 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 okay dum 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 And I want to repeat that bass. A mistake. I'm going to transpose it down again. I'm going to repeat the bass thing. Lots of um, mistakes appearing because I don't know where I'm at right now. I'm struggling to to kind of keep in rhythm, and partly because I'm doing it live, I'm doing like a one take improv, trying to lay out a melody in one go. And even though it's so simple, it's like this simple little thing because I'm doing it all in one take and attempting to nail a whole song structure and melody in one take 
uh, I'm coming to these points where I'm, I'm like, uh, my choices are suffering because I'm doing it in one take. So that's why what we're doing now, we're kind of refining stuff. Okay. Okay, mistakes, mistakes. Dum, dum. A little variation there. Again, you can see I created a little pattern here. Uh, that's a really long note. Let's see. Creating a little variation there, a little healthy variation, I'd say. Uh, much needed, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, I, I lost the one. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see, where should I put the bass? Dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Probably there. Even more variations. Going down with the bass. I just, oh, I did do. I feel like I'm, um, it's not really cool right now. Let's see. That could be even shorter. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Okay, I um, was overlapping here in a not so cool way. Gonna release it before the next one comes. Even earlier. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it, it's coming along. It, it's not, again, the, the best song in the world, but I think it holds up as a, a tune okay let's continue with that bass idea that i was kind of initiating dum, dum, dum. Continue the same behavior is that I kind of dum 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 dum. I made a little uh, pattern there of how the bass behaves, and I want to follow up on that to make it not necessarily because I want it predictable, but there is a harmony in following up on your ideas. And let's see, Okay, that one, I should probably linger on that one. Dun, 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 dun. See, is that okay? Okay, so make it longer. See. Okay, I need to change the rhythm here because I, I didn't really nail it. So this is the place where I felt like, okay, this is the perfect time to create a... a like a trance no i'm not transposing i'm just moving up an octave and this 
I, f I feel the urge to change the, the rhythm a bit here. I didn't, it didn't really work that well. Okay, I'm gonna quantize these. So, because I feel like it's all very, very straight, and I want to change that straightness a bit and make it less straight. Let's see. Dum, 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 dum. So, perhaps I could take the bass dum, dum, even further. So, Dum 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 Let's see. Is that quantized? I'm gonna quantize it. Dum dum dum. Okay, so this is this dum dum dum. Okay, I'm making a creating a more interesting uh, bass line, bass rhythm. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I'm trying to repeat the the rhythm again here. Dun 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 No, I'm gonna keep it straight. Okay, but the bass will also continue with that same kind of behavior. The bass is really important when driving a melody. It's probably just the same. I'm just going to copy this, copy and um, paste. Okay, so I'm starting to make mistakes again um, because I really wanted to make a variation and make something new there, but then uh, I was kind of stressed because I'm doing it in one take and I kind of f fall fall back onto the same idea, I guess. The same. I could probably just copy this. This um, previous idea to here. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna copy the bass as well. Oh, so what did I do here in the middle? I'm gonna end that long note. That's it. Dum 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 dum. Dum 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 dum. Okay. 
Dum 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 dum. So. Okay, so I'm gonna copy copy the bass again that I did here because it's it will fit. Um one, two, three, one, two, three, I guess. Let's see. And now you can hear I'm playing four notes, but I've set the 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 plugin to play three notes, so uh, that's why we were hearing a note loss. Let's increase the polyphony. Actually, let's see, um, we're here and poly four. Okay, so now I can tackle that first chord. Okay, so this little piece here is, I don't know, a bridge or something, something, um, a break. I didn't really nail it, so let's see what we can do to save it. I think that's interesting though. Dum, dum. I'm gonna remove that tone, keep it three. Down. Should I make that longer? Yeah, I probably should. Make it a little longer to, it makes sense. This one, down, down, down. Down, down, down. And sometimes I'm sketching out the, the tunes and the rhythm with just my voice, like down, 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 down. And then try to, to write what I just hummed. Uh, it's not too bad. Let's say down, down, down. Uh, maybe I should bring it down uh, an octave. Oh. Sorry. Ah, I do. Let's see how it connects now. Dun, 
哒哒哒哒。Okay, this is where I need to actually compose and not just wiggle it. Down, down, down. Okay, dum, 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 dum. So let's, let's listen to it. What, what I'm doing is that little bridge didn't quite cut it. Uh, I had an idea, the rhythm, the idea, the seed to the idea is there, but I, I didn't manage to follow up in real time. I think it's it's okay. The idea is okay. Is it? Down, down. Do, 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 do. Make it longer again, the same mimic, the same rhythm that I did there. Let's say, oh. down, down, down. Da, 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 da. That's not too bad. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's see if I should really tighten this. Let's see. I'm going to listen to it from here. What I should do is repeat what I just did here and follow up with the same idea. Simplify it a bit. That's it. Down, down, do, 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 do. So what if I copy this and put it over? Let's see what happens. Uh, it's going to be messy at first. Okay, let's see if we can do it like this. Down, down, down. I'm gonna tidy it up a bit. Down, down. Dun, 
So, is this enough to save it? Let's see. Okay, let's keep, keep it like that for now. I'm going to save it. <laughs> and then we're back to the original kind of uh, melody. Uh, and it goes something like this. Let's listen to the whole thing now and and see um, see what we have and what uh, is this a melody? Yeah, it's definitely a melody with a bass, and because it's a bass, it, it kind of helps us with the melody to drive it forward to give the melody uh, a, a, a meaningful intuition or uh, like its own desire to to live. So let's listen to it. did there was I just looped it and looping a track a song 
uh, is a way of of testing it, testing if it can withstand looping. And if it can, then you've constructed a song uh, that is that has a certain quality about it. Uh, game soundtracks from from the early from the 80s and the 90s they had to be simple because of hardware limitations and and everything and they became experts in creating loopable music that is not super annoying i mean every parent in the world from that time would probably disagree and probably say that it was super annoying but um but now i i disagree with that i think they created looping music that had this perfection about it that it could withstand looping. Now, a bad melody, it cannot loop. It becomes instantly, you know, an, a moment of, uh, of irritational force surrounds it. But if you create this kind of, uh, I don't know, yeah, there is a certain balance about it that when you achieve this balance is some sort of logics in it and when you re achieve that you can loop it forever and it will not become annoying many many game soundtracks they have that quality especially the best ones of course <laughs> so whether or not this has it um it's still got many imperfections but i think um it has something and we made it a bit tidy and uh, made it more logical in a way. Um, yeah, let's listen to it again. That first loop there, I think I um, actually create a little variation in the rhythm. To, to kind of the second time. Dun, 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 dun. The thing that we do later, maybe I have, I destroyed it a bit, let's, let's see. <laughs> now, this is the thing with melodies, creating loopable melodies like this uh, it's like a card house you you build a, a kind of a, a little house by really f a really fragile structure and if you later on change the structure it all falls apart so uh, be careful Now, I'm going to make a little change to the actual sound. I'm going to make um, modulation and make the sound, uh, the sustain, be a bit lower. And the decay longer. So that the, the long notes...
Yeah. So the piece to to perfect would definitely be be in the end here because I don't feel it's really it's really yeah up to it. But anyway, another thing that I just want to touch briefly upon. We've been using this mode, uh, the piano roll, I think it's called. This is really difficult to uh, to read. As a musician, uh, this is not what, what you give someone to, to learn how to play that part. No, you give them something like this, the notes, the note mode. <laughs> and uh, because I was pretty tidy with the timing, mm, it transfers into the sheet in, into notes quite yeah quite well actually so so it's in F minor I should probably go ahead and uh, type in the key somewhere where do I do that how about here C F minor okay dish so that would look better. Okay. One thing that transfers really well into notes is stuff like triplets. Uh, in notes, you can just do it like this. You you say, okay, I want to play three notes at, at the span of two notes. And you just bracket it like this and type three. And then every musician will know that it's, okay, that's a triplet. But within a sequencer, uh, there is no common rules for that. So you might have to... Um, dun, 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 dun. I wasn't super tight there, but if we zoom in, we can see that I'm actually... Uh, this one... This note is not on the beat, and not, neither is this, because it's a, a triplet. Dum, 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 one, two, three, dum. Uh, but in, uh, in notes, it's just, uh, uh, there is, the language is already there, which is really good. Uh, I wish the language for triplets and, and stuff like that, polyrhythmics, would be in in today's sequence hardware sequences as well here it's 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 already there it, it, they solved it like hundreds of years ago but today's sequencers have not solved it so uh, yeah just a little note there of interest okay um yeah so the conclusion, is there like a conclusion of all this? I, I made a melody and you've seen how I've done it. Um, I was kind of, I'm, when I say, if I say melodies come a bit natural to me, don't be uh, discouraged from hearing something like that because it's not true. It's absolutely not the truth. The truth is, I've been playing melodies all my life, and it sucked in the beginning, although I enjoyed it. I, could, I enjoyed making melodies, even though I sucked in the beginning. We all suck early on, but some of us find pleasure in it, and maybe some of us find it a bit easier, and, and that's probably uh, some talent, I guess, got to do with it, but talent has not anything to do whether you're uh, up for finishing something. Uh, that is just pure stubbornness and pure, uh, you know, the, the will to wanting to go super in-depth with something and just be a total nerd on that thing. Uh, that is what is going to, to give you the tools to finish something. And uh, eventually, if you're keeping up to that, keep doing it and doing it and doing it, you also become very good at, after some time. And then after some time, uh, you will probably say that it sort of comes a bit natural. Uh, I've been 
performing as a visual artist to contemporary jazz musicians. And they are super, super nerds on, on, on their instruments. And they've been doing it for such a long time. So they've become total experts on it uh, at, at a level that is just so far beyond what I could do. And I, I appreciate it so much. And seeing someone highly skilled like that is pure inspiration for me. Uh, even though I totally understand that I, I'm probably never going to be at that level, it inspires me to, to move forward with what I could do, become better. So never be discouraged by hearing someone that uh, says something like that, like, oh, it comes a bit natural. It's hard to explain. It's just that. It's not truth. Um, it's, it's something you, it's a lifelong achievement, I think. Okay, yeah, um, I could keep going and going and going, and I should probably stop here and let's call it a day, <laughs> I guess, yeah. Should I make one more? Like this, the way to make melodies here, the way I made it, was like through improvisation. I improvised on a keyboard. But not everyone can play the keyboard that well, but they might still have a, a good sense of melody. Yeah, okay. So let's move forward a bit and do it another way. Let's program a melody and a little loop. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to take the triangle sound now. Okay, so I created a little uh, a section there. I made it four bars long. I'm going to enter it here. And let's see, let's zoom in and see what we have. Okay, I'm going to first make the loop um, just one bar long. Okay, so what do we do? I'm going to preview it on the... Because what you can play on the keyboard is totally different from what you can program in the sequencer. It's so different. What you can program is it has nothing to do with dexterity or with uh, whether you know an instrument or have like fast fingers or tight timing. It has nothing to do with that. You can make totally far out things when you program stuff and today is probably called programming but it's composing you're composing like what i just did earlier was composing through improvising and there is a limit to what i could do by uh, composing that way uh, because i can't play everything uh, that i might want to compose so i probably start out by wiggling by hand and then I program in addition to that to achieve a different you know depth to the music but now let's start programming let's see I'm just gonna lay it okay let's randomly <laughs> lay out some notes maybe or maybe okay let's keep a make a different key like G I'm just gonna, let's see what happens now. Now, this is much closer to the way you, you might make music with hardware sequencers. Uh, you spread out a, a little, it's like casting a dice. Okay, move it. Okay, I think it's actually, it has something. Let's make a melody out of this totally random little experiment. And now because we have, we can zoom in and we can do stuff that we, that I can't do by hand. And now, oh, I'm going to turn off um, snapping. 
snap to grid off I think it's kind of cool. Don't, don't. I'm not just gonna do a little melody here with one, one track, one voice. Don't, don't. I'm going to make a loop that I find so cool so I can listen to for uh, for a long time. I think it's, it's not quite there yet. Oops. Turn on the grid again. Dun, 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 dun. I think when you make different harmonies, um, like when you move away from the given harmony in such a short loop, it becomes very, very. Um, apparent that you're looping very obvious so i'm i'm gonna stay in one kind of chord Duh. complicated. Extend the loop again, make it four bars long, and then on the second sound, down, dum dum dum. Not 
too bad, actually. Okay, let's go to the square. So, as you can hear already, there is a certain cuckoo factor appearing, I'd say. Because uh, I'm smiling, and I'm, I'm in a different kind of control now than what I was when I was freestyling. Now I'm building like perfect little snippets of loops and creating a different kind of music and not currently thinking about the whole, the whole, you know, structure of a whole song, but rather constructing a small loop. Okay, let's see. So we're at dum, dum. You're gonna make them shorter, even shorter. Just dum 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 dum. Okay, I'm gonna copy it and paste it. Piano is a physical sounding uh, sound. Now we've been listening to this um, computer like computer chip sounds. And by the way, I'm using chip sounds from Plug, which is a very nice chip sound uh, plugin. Um, by far my favorite one. They go to great extent to to make the chip sounds sounds totally legit. Um, and this is Keyscape, uh, which has like a super nice keyboard. So by adding this to this, I don't know. The conclusion is never give up. Uh, listen very carefully to what you're doing, and if you if you think it sucks, it probably sucks, and then you need to improve. And I I think my stuff sucks all the time, and I try to listen carefully for for what it is that I don't like, and then I attack it and change it and refine it until I don't think it sucks anymore. And after, you know, doing that for a long time, 
you develop your own rules and your own methods and hearing and is for uh, for harmonics and melodies and eventually hopefully developing your own style okay so yeah i don't know what to make of all this but i hope you've enjoyed staying with me while i create melodies and rambling about it and uh, yeah please hit me up in the comments and let's keep the discussion going and oh if you like what i do here on youtube and with the videos that i put out and industry specials and tutorials and stuff please consider throwing in a couple of bucks over at patreon patreon is a, a really good crowdfunding platform but the difference uh, from traditional tra 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 <laughs> traditional crowdfunding is that you uh, you uh, subscribe ra uh, to fund ongoing work rather than uh, try to pre-finance a big project little donations like a dollar here and there two dollars or whatever you feel fit and then uh, keep doing that for as long as you you like to support my videos and then when you if you don't want to do it or if you want to change how much you want to donate every month uh, you just go in and change it and also I'm making uh, a lot of uh, patches available so everyone who is donating will get all of my patches as part of the uh, of the reward but uh, if you if you're not up to this you know monthly donation thing which I totally understand I've got a web store as well store.truecuckoo.com where and that's a good place to go if you just want to download a pack or add some tip or if you like also um something i want to keep mentioning i developed this i don't know relation with uh, a web store that i it's not an, a web store an online store uh, for synthesizers uh, it's called pyramid sounds and it's really really good they have uh a super nice selection of synthesizers modulars and electron stuff teenage engineering noise audio um yeah they've got lots of really nice uh, synthesizers and uh, i think um i just want to keep mentioning them because it's such a good store and i uh we've started to make a little bit of collaborations here and there like my patrons sometimes get access to special deals, uh, which is really cool, and uh, for a limited time. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention them. Pyramid Sounds, really cool store. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope I'll see you soon. Peace out. Stay curious and stay cuckoo.